dude and let's just let's just put this out there right now if your reason for qdoba is because there's free queso and free guac you just keep that to yourself right now because you're poor <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah exactly disturbing the peace with some peace of mind sleeping in jeans i'ma need a night od on a cheap advice oc on a cheapest flight lately i've been on the move trying to get to something but i told her i've been running just to see the sights so we got the mic set up well huh? yeah so hopefully you can't see um hopefully this is the best sounding episode of friends with benedict because i'm actually talking into a microphone but i don't have a mic stand <laughs> so i'm just recording i just got my microphone perched Mike's on my just... chemex <laughs> and i got the big fuzzy stupid pop filter so i look like a dingus but yeah you really look like you know what you're doing over there it, well uh, you know this is probably the best uh the best we've got so far which is really embarrassing quick intermission from schaefer of the future here i'm editing the podcast right now and as luck would have it my audio file did get corrupted, so it does sound like trash, just like always, because I just had to use the on-camera audio microphone, so. Probably. Guys. It'll be interesting to hear how this sounds compared to the iPhone, because I don't think it'll be that much different, with the once, exception of pops. Once I do my, once I do my processing, <laughs> Ooh. it's going to sound you great. Do you do audio processing? Wow. Yeah, I got a secret recipe. I have a story to tell, and then I also have um, the. I I just want to talk about the worst commercial I've ever seen because I saw it. Ooh. Yeah, because I saw it this weekend. I really just well, I've wanted to rant about it, and I was like, man, I I almost called you because because I was so mad, but then I was like, I'll just hold off till we're recording. Oh wow! Well, that's sick because I actually I wasn't planning on this, but I had the idea of talking about what the most impactful ad we've ever seen was so we cool. could do we could do both like after you share this terrible ad yeah i'd love to hear like just a super impactful ad on you as well yeah i feel like i got that locked down um well where do you want where do you want to begin because <laughs> we start could do me off anything. with a story it okay. sounds like you got a story to tell i do have a story to tell and i can't decide if this is something that I'm going to want to cut later or not, we'll see. But, okay. um, but, but basically, uh, so, you know, we're both, we both do, you know, like YouTube stuff, whatever. But then I, a lot of the, a lot of the work I do outside of the YouTube stuff and outside of Fox and dialed is just like, co whatever, like commercial, I call it commercial work. It's just like, it's work for local small stuff. Right. Well, we we got and by we i mean me and i i work with another guy named ryan we got this project that i'm not going to say anything about because i don't i don't know i don't want to be rude but we got this really cool project really excited about it whatever um but there's a huge overhead cost for being able to capture this yeah this project right so in the contract when we bid it out we're like we're gonna need quite a bit extra money so that we can afford a bunch of equipment so that we can properly capture whatever. Okay. So that's important because I don't want it to sound like someone just handed me a check for this crazy amount of money. <laughs> like this, this money is going towards production, but basically this week I had to meet up with the guy to get this check. And since I live in a, I live in a town with a ski area, everyone pretty much just meets up on the mountain, like on the ski area. And so we're texting back and forth and he's like, yeah, I, you know, I'm out on the mountain right now. It's like, if you, if you just catch up with me, I have my checkbook on me. I'll just write you a check. And I was like, okay, cool. So I've got all my snowboard stuff on. I'm out having a great day. It's like halfway through the ski day. And I meet up with this guy and he, like chairlift style writes me a check for all the expenses that we have. Right. He writes the check on the chairlift. It wasn't on the chairlift, <laughs> but it was, it was at oh, the ski okay. area, you know? So I, yeah. my hands are wet I, cause they just came yeah. out of my wet gloves and everything. And so yeah. he hands it to me and I'm like delicately trying to keep it from not disintegrating in my hand. And again, this, I don't want this to sound like a big giant flex, but it's North of dollars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And again, that's all like, it's all for expenses and stuff, right? It's not like we're just getting that money, but, sure. but I Still wasn't a big done. check that you don't want to be 
holding on a mountain. But but I'm like not done with the ski day, right? So I went snowboarding yesterday. <laughs> oh no! With <laughs> with thousand dollars, thousand dollars in my back pocket. <laughs> And I wow. and I had I had Freebird on replay in my headphones. <laughs> Why? Why Freebird? Because Bird? I was living the American dream, dude. <laughs> it was just like it's the most valuable man on the mountain. Yeah, for I, that day. I feel like this story kind of fizzles out. There's no real point at which <laughs> anything really happened, but just the circumstance I was in, and I just was oh, like, dude, that's monumental. And I think the reason I think the reason I thought it was such an important story is because I would never have expected my life to pan out like this. Like, dude, like in 2019, I was basically homeless, and now I'm snowboarding with this mess. Yeah. <laughs> And also, that doesn't happen. Like, like things are going good for me. They're not going that good. That's not happening all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. That, but those, the moral those expenses of the story, get eaten up real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, I think the moral of the story is essentially just that I, di- I had no idea if doing video was going to pan out for me. And it's really easy, even when things are going well, to like re- – to, remember that things are actually going well for like i just mm. think that la- that day i really noticed you know like this That's is wor- awesome. this is working like the yeah. fact we're doing anything with a budget like that is so cool and i'm so i'm super grateful that they that they trust us and i'm super grateful that i got to go skiing with that check in my pocket dude that's so sick and that's that's such an important mindset for anyone i don't care if you're creative entrepreneur anything like that mindset's just so crucial because i mean what's the alternative the alternative is you just endlessly hope for more and more and more and you're never happy with it or you can just recognize that your um like your you know what's the cliche your floor is someone else's ceiling like yeah, wherever sure. you're at right now is someone's you know ultimate dream and like it, it's all cliches wrapped up in it but man what a better way to live your life when you're just you're just grateful at all points for Dude, <laughs> whatever I just, milestone I just, you've hit. Well, the funny thing is uh, having having that kind of money in your back pocket makes you really good at snowboarding. I was like, I felt like I was... <laughs> I was going to say, I, I could picture you riding with like that. Dude, I just felt like I was, I was indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, man. So, wow, what a beautiful story. Yeah, I think it was just a real nice time to reflect and be... And be and be grateful and proud of what, what sort of has happened up until this point. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, yeah, it was just a good moment. It's just a good, you know, it's a little, like it was a little moment where I could put a, a, just a little bit of a victory. Um, Cause the creative process is just full of not whatever the opposite of victory is not defeat, but yeah, I'm just, just always in my head. Anguish. Like I'm always <laughs> yeah. in my head, like I'm not doing good enough. And that was like one mm. time out of the last, out of you know, there are only a couple days a year. I feel like I get to go like, no, nah, I did enough this time. And we haven't yeah. even, we haven't even started filming. So I'm, I'm probably going <laughs> to listen back to this and be like, you should not have, <laughs> you should not have yeah. been that stoked. So yeah, you're in the, you're in the early phase before it dips down and you're in the pits of despair in the middle of the process. And yeah. It Gosh, I hope we'll all end up okay eventually, but that's how it always goes. Yeah. I'm just really hoping we do a good job with this because, uh, anyway, yeah, I just hope we do a good job. <laughs> because at this point it's important now that this story has been told (laughs) yeah seriously well you got a good uh a good month of backlogged episodes to catch up that's the only reason i felt like it would be fun to tell the story because i'm still remembering it but by the time it comes out this will all have so in future episodes maybe i'll follow up and say if we blew it or not hopefully we don't blow it yeah yeah there you go (laughs) yeah which speaking of that I, i think maybe a little later on this episode. I think we talked about it last week, but we're trying to get to a hundred episodes. We're at like a hundred episodes or bust. And when we get to a hundred episodes, I, I said this off, off mic, but now I'll say it on mic. Um, I gave Schaefer full veto power. Schaefer has a deep history of nuking 
everything he does. <laughs> he has a history of making beautiful, beautiful works of art that I love revisiting. And then you'll you'll go to revisit someday and it'll be completely disappeared from his channel. So with that history, uh, I gave Schaefer veto power to where if we get to episode 100 and he wants to nuke the entire podcast, he can do it. Dude, somehow I just went from the co-host of the podcast to the villain of the <laughs> podcast. The... <laughs> <laughs> well, if you yeah. saw, May... by this point, our Play-Doh episode will be out. And you can see how scared I am of having... <laughs> the Play-Doh episode was just existential crisis for Shay. Yeah, yeah. So it's not so much me just trying to ruin the party. It's more just like, if I get to the point and the existential weight is too much for me to bear, then... yeah. No, and and to be fair, just so that all of the villain villainousness isn't on you, I'm I'm for sure giving myself that same power at episode 100 too, because it's a weird weird thing. I mean, starting any new project is weird, but having a podcast is extra weird. Yeah, I think we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because right now. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Not that it, you know, yeah, we'll see how it goes. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Episode 100 or bust. Yeah. And if we get to 100, maybe we delete it all. I don't yeah. know. We'll yeah. see. Um, Oh, yeah. So where I was going with that was we talked about doing a Q&A for our future selves on episode 100. Um, so maybe we'll do that later on this episode. But first, I want to hear about this terrible ad that you saw okay well i apologize um that i'm hogging the spotlight right now because i'm talking a lot but i'm so excited Dude, to talk about this looks good on you shave oh, thank you i'm so <laughs> excited to talk about this because i have never been more put off by an ad ever Ooh. and it's an i'll just tell you what it is so it's an ad for grammarly which is that thing if I'm sure everyone has gotten this ad, but it's basically like when you're typing emails, it has whatever AI intelligence that helps you not speak in a passive voice and tells you where to use your commas, whatever. It's basically like a, like a grammar correct software, right? Yeah. The whole point of this <laughs> business <laughs> is to make the copywriting more engaging. That's yeah. what they do. That is... And in their advertisement, they decided to use not once, not twice, but three times the exact sound my computer makes when I get an email. Oh, no. So this ad comes on and it's got the like Apple like whoom sound when you get an email. Yeah. And I immediately click off to see if I've gotten an email and I, I've gotten nothing because and then I go back and I'm like, oh, it was on the ad, right? So then I click back, the ad's still playing. They play, they do it again, and that time I'm like, maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe my, maybe my laptop's freaking out and I actually did get an email. So I click off again to check my emails. Anyway, this ad, you... this ad from a company that's supposed to retain attention when it comes to copywriting and emails and all that stuff has yeah. made me click off the ad Twice. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That that might be bad. But you have a notification sound every time you get an email? On my laptop, yeah. That sounds terrible. Why do you do that? I don't actually know how to turn it off or I didn't need to turn it off. <laughs> okay. It's you actually definitely helpful. Definitely turn that off. That's actually really annoying. No, no, no. It's actually helpful. But, well, because my email, I I have it where usually almost 90% of the time if I get an email, it's important anyway. So I like uh, I like having the sound and checking it as soon as I can. So I like the email sound. But dude, the fact that they made me click off that and it's one of those non-skippable ads. So it's not like I'm sitting there oh, trying to learn yeah. anything about Grammarly. But yeah. how bad can you possibly <laughs> mess that up? Distracts you so much that you leave their ad yes. to do something completely To go different. do something that has to do with what they're trying to help you be better at. Wow. It's so is bad. bad. So usually I'm like, usually I'm like, you can't, you know, it's like there's someone behind the creative team that can't be like everyone involved with the production of that ad writing. 
The fact no one was like, hey, maybe we shouldn't put the email sound in this ad. <laughs> Dude, I'm yeah. so mad. It made me so <laughs> mad. I was just like, what if you have to be as dumb as a brick <laughs> to get through the whole process. And it's really well made. It's lit really well and all this. Oh, dude. I I agree it's bad. I wouldn't say you'd have to be dumb as a brick because I was about to bring up something You're going to say terrible. you, you got to be dumb as a brick to have an email sound. <laughs> I just don't think... I don't, th <laughs> I don't think you're, you're dumb if you do that. I think you're just... Um, you're not very considerate because I, I have realized how much I despise when videos have a text message sound or an alarm sound in it for the same reason. And I didn't realize that because I've definitely used like the Apple alarm sound in previous videos. But now yeah, anytime I, I see I it. I did that in my most, not my most recent, but two videos ago, I had the Apple alarm sound. I'm dumb as a brick. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. We're we're both dumb as a brick. <laughs> but what's the alternative? Do you just use a like a stock generic alarm sound? Rewrite instead? it. Rewrite Re it. <laughs> Start over. I feel that way. Yeah. Like when movies, like when um when they're typing on their iPhones in movies, and they yeah, have I was just type. about to ask about. I'm that. like, why do you have that sound? On? Wow, now I like totally see, see your point of view. Well. Okay, man, there's so many tangents here because that that thing in particular, movies with texting in it, that's that's got like a cult hatred behind it. Oh, really? Like, okay. That's a thing. Oh, okay. Like I hear that all the time. It's like a, uh, I don't know. It's a it's a trope or a cliche or something. Sure. Supposedly it's a big it's a big no no. I've never but heard I don't of that, but I. That. Oh, really? Yeah. It, oh. it doesn't it doesn't bother me when a character is texting or getting texts. I don't know why that, that doesn't bother me, but it seems to be something universally hated. Interesting. I, I vividly remember when I was younger and cell phones were starting to get more popular and private, you know, it's like, it seemed like everyone had a cell phone. I vividly, I don't know why I'm remembering this, but I vividly remember thinking there's going to be a day when cell phones wind up in songs. People are going to sing about, and we're Whoa. here. Wow. Yeah. And Drake brought Ooh. us here because <laughs> there's like the whatever the hot blind bling song. And that's where it all started. Yeah. I, th I think there's a bunch of songs about cell phones. Yeah. But, you know, at but, some point, someone had to write the first song about a cell phone or with a cell phone. That's true. In it. And that's probably but the same why, with movies. Like, why does it bother you in movies? I don't understand the hatred behind it. Is it just the sound or is it? I have no uh, idea. It, Huh. Okay. Maybe it's just, um, oh, maybe it, I have no idea, but maybe it just has to do with the fact that it makes you think about your phone or something mm. or also execution. It's also funny when they're like typing on their phone and then the text come up on screen, not on the phone. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. See, I see this debated all the time because some people are saying like, don't show the phone. There's so many other creative ways to show the text. Yeah. And then other people are saying, don't do that text on screen thing. Just show the phone. What if they just, I don't know. Every time they look at the phone, they go, I just got a text from my brother. <laughs> yeah. It says, meet me at the gas station in 20 minutes. <laughs> hmm. They just need to have Siri read out all of the text right. out loud on yeah. screen. I don't know how to do it. All. I do think, it bothers me when I see it, but I couldn't tell you why. But yeah. I, but the, but but the thing is about my ad thing. It's like the ad is in the place where you're gonna open the app that they're making the notification for. So it's yeah. it, I feel like it's a whole different that's thing. Totally, totally. That's exactly what I was gonna say. When, and I think that's why texting or whatever doesn't bother me in a movie. Because when yeah. I'm in a movie, I'm watching a movie. Right, right. But if I'm watching a YouTube video with a pre-roll ad, like you said. If it's a YouTube ad, they know you're most likely on your phone or your computer. It's it's equivalent to if someone made either like a TikTok or Instagram reel and they and they made the perfect screen animation of you getting a text, but you didn't actually get a text. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's not the equivalent of that, but but you know what I'm saying? It's like it's on the medium of the thing that they're trying to not distract you from. 
but they're using the yeah. sound that I don't know. It just got it made me so mad. I I think it's different than the movie thing because I don't know. I don't know why. Because yeah. I'm right. Well, if if anyone has more insight on the texting in movies thing, uh, let us know. Because that seriously, I, I've never fully understood that. And it seems to be a big deal for people. And if but. people have seen this Grammarly ad, let me know if I'm just crazy. But <laughs> I'm not. I'm right. Yeah. Well, what's the, what's the most impactful ad? Like, what ad have you seen that stands out to you the most? I'm trying or to... was the best? Um, if you have your answer, you should go first because I know it. I just have to remember the campaign. Oh, yeah. I got mine, I think. I'll probably think of one that's better than this, but yeah. I'm also very biased because it was a Chipotle ad maybe mm, five years ago or so, and they had the Willie Nelson singing... Um, that Coldplay song, Nobody Said It Was Easy, whatever that song is, The Scientist. It was Willie Nelson singing The Scientist for the soundtrack. And then the the visuals was this like old grandpa farmer and his family farm. And then he raises his son on the farm and his son goes on to build this massive factory farm and loses complete touch with the land. No. And and so in the background, it's Willie Nelson with his like super sad voice singing The Scientist. And the son's just like in this factory and all of the life is gone while they're turning pigs into cubes of pork. And then and then at the, the climax of the song. He like tears it all down and goes back to real farms and the sun starts coming up and the grass growing again. He's petting the pigs on the head. It's beautiful, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is that ad what made you vegetarian? Uh, no, I think I was already vegetarian at that time. Okay. So it was just... um. Actually, yes. It was that ad. Yep. Right. There it is. Yeah. That yes. would be the most Thanks impactful ad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no. that's especially wild coming from... Uh, a place that makes some of the best meat. <laughs> it's because they do it right, man. They do it right. They do it right. That's a good answer. That's a really good answer. I yeah. think I remember it, um, but it didn't impact me at all. <laughs> no way. That just means you haven't seen <laughs> now, it. No, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. You're, you're probably right. I seem to recall Willie Nelson singing The Scientist, though. So oh, okay. maybe that detail yeah. stood out. It was so, so, so good. God bless Chipotle. That place is... Oh. That's so good. Yeah, man. You really, when I met Jake, I was a Qdoba guy and um, I've seen the light since. I, I was like, it's a, my mission in life to convert people from Qdoba fans to Chipotle stands. Yeah, dude. I, I, I don't know. Now that I'm on the other side, um, I just look back at those. You can't go back. I look back at those dismal pastures, all the, <laughs> the war field I was on that was <laughs> the Qdoba. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the, curious, actually, also a lot of a lot of audience interaction in this episode because I would love to know what people think about Chipotle versus Chipotle Qdoba. or Qdoba. Yeah, yeah, dude. And let's just let's just put this out there right now. If your reason for Qdoba is because there's free queso and free guac, you just keep that to yourself right now because you're poor. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> if your reason is because free <laughs> queso and free guac, let me just let me just say this: Why do you think it's free? Oh, because it's snap! Absolute shit. That's why. Yeah. Okay. That's a way. That's a better. <laughs> Thing to say than no, what I said. I, I, I align with what Jake I said. I like because you're poor. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy who snowboards with thousand dollars in his pocket. No, real cool shit. Not poor people. Now, not shit. why. Not at all why. I uh, I, I told. Okay, um, I just got a I just got a pause. Okay, I think I'm still recording audio. Um, it says recording, but I don't see my levels. Anyway. 
Hopefully, oh, okay. I'm not just talking into this microphone for no reason, but it's possible. <laughs> yeah, it's just a prop. <laughs> it's definitely possible. G. Willikers, Jake. G. Willikers. Did you think of your your most impactful ad? Uh, I have. I I know that it's for a car commercial. It's a car commercial, mm. and I'm pretty sure it's Volvo, which is weird. Um, and I'm going to have to find it and actually put it in the show notes because I can't remember what it's called. But the thing that's cool about it is they hired this really cool um, director to to just make like if you were to go completely overboard on a car commercial, because, you know, how car commercials are all the whatever, like families getting in the car and going to the beach and everything. They, they essentially were like make a whole story out of the cliche of a car commercial Um and, and basically what, what – and it's a long video. I think it's like almost a three-minute video. But basically it's it's a commercial for their technology where if something steps out in front of the car, the car will stop, right? But oh. but what it is is it's this girl who who lives out her whole life. And she – it's just beautifully made. I feel like the biggest thing about it is it's just beautifully made. But she you yeah. know goes to college and – meets all her friends and then she gets a job and then, you know, she travels after school, whatever. And, and like, there's this whole, like, like basically from childhood until the near end, but then somehow they do a really good job of making, of making the connection that she would, none of that would have happened if she had gotten hit by a, if she had walked out in front of a car that didn't have this technology. And then it has a I shot think of, I vaguely remember. Yeah. That. And then there's a shot of the car coming up and almost hitting her, but stopping right beforehand and her like looking up mm. into the, like at the headlights. I don't know. It's kind of a, I feel like it's a cliche or at least just kind of a basic storyline, but the way they execute it is just so unbelievably beautiful. It, they did such a good job. Yeah. And that I go oh, back awesome. when I'm trying to think of like shot ideas or if I'm trying to get ideas for lighting or anything, I go back to that video. I've gone back to that video mm. so many times because it's just really so okay. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that wow. I don't think the copywriting or the story or anything were as impactful as just like, God, they just did such a good job on it. So Yeah. And and you don't remember the car, but probably because you weren't in the market for a car at that time. I wonder uh, if. Yeah. Like sometimes I think about that a lot of like sometimes ads can be so beautiful and you remember them, but you have no idea what they're for. Yeah. <laughs> what they're trying to yeah. sell. It definitely uh, did make me want to get my brakes fixed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my brakes are still going not working. Brakeless for months now. I had an appointment to get them fixed on the 26th and I thought it was the 28th. And on the 27th, I was like, how weird to have a break appointment on a Saturday. And then I checked and I was wrong. Oh, no. And I, and I made the appointment in November. Um, oh, so you missed your break. appointment. So I missed my break appointment. And then they asked her like, that's cool. We can reschedule it. Are you available anytime in March? It's like, Oh geez. <laughs> but um, I'm going to be breakless for the whole year. Actually, I'm going to be breakless till Tuesday because I'm coming down to Denver and having it done. So I might see you oh, wow. if you're around. Oh, hell yeah. I was I was just about to say, we're overdue for an in-person episode. We've been doing a lot of remote episodes lately. Yeah, I know. We definitely are. Well, I, yeah, I mean, we'll talk about that off, off camera, but a lot of, a lot of, uh, I'll, I'll be in Denver for a little bit so we can make something happen. Nice. Um, Sweet. Also, Ikea's What If by Eric Henriksen is an honorable mention as one of the mm. best ever. Ooh, I haven't seen that one. It I love ads. Yeah, it's funny how that's a, uh, I, I don't know, it's a very like honorable aspiration for cinematographers. Like it's a space where you can make really beautiful artwork if if you get in, I don't know, if you, if you get in with the right brands or something, ads can be an insane way to, to have like beautiful works of art. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. Um, it's Gustav Johansson. That's the guy who posted it. It's Volvo Moments. I was right. It's Volvo. Uh, oh, nice. So yeah, okay. that's, that's one of the best ads I've ever seen. It's so heartwarming. Nice. Well, I'm going to have to look it up and you're going to have to watch the Chipotle ad. Yeah, I'll watch the Chipotle ad. Is it is it still a goal of yours to get into like 
like serious commercial work like that or like i think you've talked about wanting to do ads for mercedes in the past i would love to do a mercedes ad they usually uh i don't really love mercedes cars but they seem to have the coolest ad campaigns Mm -hmm. and from just the inner circles that i've that i've forced my way into on the internet of people who talk about those big clients and stuff it sounds like they'll usually find directors they really like and then just hand over the ideas to them and just be like what do you want to make and then oh wow so long as they so long as they trust the work um so any, yeah i mean car commercials i think would be really fun because i feel like it's a really really cool way to build a narrative around a bunch of six shots of cars mm, because if you yeah. just get six shots of cars it's like okay if you just, you know, it, it, it's like you get to meld the two, you know, which is fun. Because I yeah. love the idea of filming on, um, like, Cineflex would be so cool. Shooting out of a helicopter with oh, Cineflex. Yeah. Or like, just the experience would be cool. But then getting to tell a story while also doing that. Because ski movies are another thing. I would love to work on ski movies. But all of them are, I mean, that's just Cineflex, basically. Yeah. So, Dude, well, Mercedes in particular it seems like they don't even care if there's cool shots of the cars in the ad. Like no, there's a real. Mercedes ad with ASAP Rocky in it. And I think there's a couple shots of a Mercedes in it, but it's mostly like ASAP Rocky in his house talking about his childhood and yeah, it's beautiful. And there's so few cars in it. One of my favorite Mercedes ads is this young couple that has a kid and they're, they have to buy a ton of diapers and the whole premise of it is this new Mercedes hatchback has more room so you can like fit more diapers in the back. But the way it's, again, the way it's made and filmed is so good. It's so beautifully made. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it would be cool to do stuff like that. But I think it's always a moving target because again, in those like on all those Facebook groups where the, where the, don't make fun of me for being in Facebook groups. The Facebook <laughs> groups where a lot of those guys talk about that stuff. Um, all of them get up to the level of doing ads like that. And then they all want to go into narrative. So, yeah, well, because on the opposite end of the spectrum, I wanted to bring up your beautiful iPhone video. Oh, that great. You just Cause made. I wanted to talk about your year in review video. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Cause gosh, on the, on the absolute opposite end of the spectrum from, writing and scripting and filming a thought out short film you just made a youtube video that was a message to your future kids and it was just god if if anyone out there if you haven't seen this video schaefer did it's i i feel like every video you make i say it's one of my favorites but this one's absolutely one of my favorites because it's just it's just random clips from your year all on iPhone, just random, like from the hip shots. And you craft it into this story that just feels so cohesive and so thought out. Um, it's a masterpiece, man. It's well, beautiful. It's important for me to say it is highly um, the whole Picasso steal like an artist thing. I stole mm. like an artist hard on that one. Um, and I've mentioned the video that I stole it from in the past. But there's a video by Christian Sorensen Hansen, I think is his name, um, called Know This, which is like very, very similar. Um, oh. Filmed on iPhone, just like a narrative thing laid over a bunch of iPhone footage. So it's not like I was a genius and had the idea for it. I cop I ripped off, I heavily ripped off an absolute true genius. But <laughs> I feel like I did it in a way that was at least enough my own that I'm still proud of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the way you like just the words that you wrote and the way that you paired them with the visuals was beautiful. Like, obviously you didn't just, I haven't seen that video, but obviously you didn't just copy all of the words and stuff, you know, you would like, definitely notice very, uh, you'd notice a lot of similarities, <laughs> man, well, not maybe not in the words so much, but the structure and everything is like so similar. And even the yeah. music, I was like, I just want it to be like that video. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> well, Hey, I mean, I, I would say it's honorable for you to even say that out loud because I would say that that's the case for basically all art. You know, all art is inspired from other areas of life and other art. So that's cool that you say what the source of inspiration is. Well, I just um, like we talked about it last week, like my YouTube channel is where I'm learning 
and yeah and learning so so often comes from rip you know ripping off or being inspired by other people's i mean basically all creativity is just a collaboration of a bunch of different things we've seen and um yeah i mean this one for sure was me just being like can i use this footage to make something that i like even if it is even if it points back to this other video super heavily um yeah so yeah i feel like i learned a lot which is good totally and beyond that you're you're not trying to create something that goes on this short film circuit like I'm sure you made that 99.9% for yourself because oh, you're exactly. going to revisit yep. that video for decades to come. Well, even when I was uploading it, I was like, uh, it was, it's that whole thing, right? Where you're like, Oh, does this fit on my channel or not? And I'm just done with that, dude. It's like, I want to have creative freedom. The reason I do YouTube is because I felt like that was the option that gave me the most creative freedom. Mm -hmm. And when I think about what's going to fit and what's good, you know, how is YouTube going to categorize my channel? If I upload this, or is it just going to think, you know, it's like, I don't want to think about any of that. I just want to make stuff I want to make. And so that was yeah. definitely uh, me putting my foot in the sand and just being like, I'm going to make what I want to make now from now on. That's, yeah. <laughs> no more of this, no more of this <laughs> slave to the SEO stuff because I'm going to make my best stuff when I do it for myself. It's just the way it's mm -hmm. going to be. I won't make my most popular stuff when I do it for myself, but I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. And I, yeah. I say that more as like to try and convince myself that that's true more than anything. Uh, well, if the end goal isn't to be a YouTuber. Right. Then like, of course, you know, of course you should do that and make the things you want to make and put them up there. Like, why not? Yeah. Like, your end goal isn't to be a YouTuber. Your end goal is to be an artist making films. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, thank you for the compliments. I feel uh, I feel similarly about your video in the sense that I couldn't believe how simple it was, and yet how like it's one again. Like you said, it's one of my all time favorite Jake Fruit videos for real. Wow, really? Yeah, it's so good, man. I that's, it especially because I feel like mine hinge hint. And it's not better or worse. It's just the way the video is laid out. Mine hinged so much on the on the voiceover. If you didn't have the voiceover, mm. it would just be a bunch of random shots with a, with a random shots with a good song in the background. Yeah, yours was like a bunch of seemingly random shots with a good song in the background that was cohesive without the <laughs> narrative. You know what I mean, dude? It's so funny because from my perspective, that feels like a cop out. Like while I was making it. I had the feeling of, man, like, why don't I have any voiceover to tie this together? You know, like all this is, is visuals, but there, there were a couple comments on that video that said exactly what you said. They said, it's so cool that you didn't need words for this at all. And for me, that felt like a total cop out. Yeah. So it's just funny to hear that well, perspective. Like, I really like, I really like videos that make me feel like the person that made it did something like like brave if you will hmm. and sometimes brave doesn't mean they got the sickest transition <laughs> and we're hanging out of a car yeah. sometimes brave means you omitted something that seems essential and still had it stand alone and so i was man. like i was just like man that would be so hard for me to not try and be like okay now i have to write the perfect voice <laughs> the perfect voiceover and the fact you didn't i was like god why didn't I think of yeah. that? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. That That is a cool lesson because there were so many times where I just felt like I'm just being lazy because I'm just pairing visuals with the story and I'm not telling a story. But yeah, I, there's just there's so many different ways to approach conveying a message and telling a story. And that's just that's always been my favorite thing to do with videos is finding music that means a lot to me and pairing visuals that just augment the music and augment the story. So dude, similar to like you pulling inspiration, that video was because of Gene Dawson. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Like Gene Dawson did all of the music in this video and the intro um, song is what inspired the entire concept, that concept of, you know, addiction and this endless cycle of addiction. And so, um, well, I guess, I guess his was more about mental health, but anyway, yeah, no, <laughs> it, it, dude, it, it inspired awesome. the, the thought cycle for me. And I, 
I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to kind of branch that off into a, a question because I wanted to see what you think is the difference between procrastination and letting an idea breathe. Yeah, that's because a great question. with that video that I made, it started as just a montage to uh, Pirate Radio by Gene Dawson. So it was just the middle bit. I just right. started making this montage to Pirate Radio. And at that point, it felt like this is just a montage. Like, it's fine. I'm pairing visuals to this song, but it's just a montage. And so then as I... I felt like I hadn't done much because I just put a bunch of clips over the song. But as I let it breathe and as I took time off and on of the project, I thought of that beginning bit because I thought of that other Gene Dawson song. And I was like, oh, that's sick because then that could be this addiction to my phone before it gets into escape and living life, etc. And I literally had those two parts the intro addiction to phone and then the montage over the Gene Dawson song. I exported it and uploaded it to YouTube just ending with, um, it ends with a clip of my nephew on the beach and it says ILYSM, just like any other video I would do. It ends with ILSM and ends. I uploaded that to YouTube, had it scheduled to post at midnight, the day before it goes up. It's midnight the day before the video goes up. And at that point, I realized that I have this shot of me driving in my van where I pull out my phone at the end of the shot of me driving dude, my van. And then it clicked for me. Dude, it's so funny. When I saw that shot, I was like, he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get. So, I, I literally was like, I bet you that shot unlocked the whole idea. I Man, I yeah. wish I said that before you said it because I had that thought. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as I saw that, I pulled my phone out at the end of that shot. I was like, oh my God. Yes. And it felt so much better because at first it was like, oh yeah, I escaped the phone addiction and now I live my life and it's sick. But that's not the true story. Yeah. The true story is it's just this endless battle of trying to stop being addicted to this stupid box. Right. Uh, so yeah, it felt way more honest. So I liked you the way it ended so, so yeah, much you more. Ended the re you, uh, you ended with the relapse then. Yeah, right. and thankfully that was really easy. And I wanted to use that shot too of me sitting in the garage yeah. where it's just shadowy beams of me on my phone. Yeah, and that was a way to slap that shot in there. So, dude. Anyway, so so yeah, th that happened at the eleventh hour. Yeah, like so that got me thinking of what is the difference between procrastination yeah. and letting an idea breathe. I have initial thoughts on that question, and I don't know if this is the like the tried and true answer. But for some reason, the idea of working on something is like, well, my laptop's got to be open. I have to have my project panel open. I have to be mm. sitting there with all my shots or I have to be, I have to have my camera in my hand or I have to be, whatever. But I would say the overwhelming majority of the work happens when you're just thinking about it. Like thinking yeah. about it is work. And, and mm -hmm. I would even I would even say thinking about it for a lot of people is the writing process, whether you're actually writing it down or not. Yeah. And take I've, I've been watching a lot of interviews with Quentin Tarantino, right? Like the amount of time that it takes to actually film and edit and cast and do all that stuff when it comes to mm. a Quentin Tarantino movie is so short compared to the writing process. The writing process is years long. Yeah. And yet somehow, because I, maybe because we don't have a journal in our hand or we don't have the whatever, it's like when you're when you're thinking of the video and how you want it to pan out and play out and everything, we don't call that writing and we don't call that work. Mm -hmm. That's for some reason procrastinate. Uh, to me, procrastinating is when I am checked out, when I'm when I'm just like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch a movie or I'm going to watch YouTube or whatever. And, and sometimes that also is work because I'm looking for ideas, right? But yeah. it has to be on my mind for it right. to really count, I think. But it's on my mind more often than not. So I don't right. think I'm a big, you know, lately my uploads have been more and more sporadic, like maybe one a month or one every two months or whatever. But I don't think I'm worse at procrastinating. I think mm -hmm. I just have higher standards and I think I'm working harder at things that I didn't consider work earlier. Man, 
that is so refreshing to hear and so true because I'm still in process of this, but that's been such a massive thing for me to learn is if I'm not, like you said, if I'm not writing in my notes app or my journal, or I'm not editing footage or filming footage, I feel like I'm slacking off and not doing anything. But that's always when the the inspiration comes and the ideas come is when I'm skating or just going for a walk or hanging with friends or like it's it's so difficult to remember how pivotal that is for the creative process and it feels like you're not doing anything it's just it's such a strange thing for me coming from a a mechanical engineering background where you literally log your hours worked on each project and you have to like you have to bullet point list out what you did to prove that your time is being spent yeah. accordingly. Yeah. So to go from that to this fluid creative process where ideas could come when you're skateboarding, like, <laughs> it's so difficult to remind myself that that is part of the work. Especially uh, when, yeah. especially, I mean, I don't know about for you, but for me, it's my best ideas come when I'm doing mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I would imagine at least some of this is derivative from, hustle culture because we're it's always like yeah you got to be grinding like mm-hmm. but that's such a loose uh, like grinding <laughs> what a weird word for it <laughs> you know yeah because to me the the times when i'm really getting the most productive uh, even the word productive is like kind of whack because it's not like i'm it's not like i'm like <sighs> it's just clarity it's time when i'm it's time when i am finding clarity and i don't call that grinding and i don't call that productive but I also don't call it procrastinating. And without it, I make my worst stuff. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's so true. Like that grinding mindset, the the image that comes to me right away is sitting at a laptop, you know, doing work on a laptop. And particularly in this video making storytelling space, if you're not living a full life with human stories and experiences and and filling your life with life (laughs) you're not gonna have any stories to tell you're not gonna have any inspiration for like stories to tell people and emotions to convey you're just gonna be boring (laughs) and poor (laughs) Poor. you're not even gonna be able to afford queso on your chipotle burrito (laughs) I sure hope people have a sense of humor. (laughs) Let me put it this way. My videos are so personal to me and hopefully this, maybe I don't want this to change, but my, my videos are very much a encapsulation of how I've been feeling lately. That's kind of all my videos really are. And if I'm just hectic and frantic, that's how my videos. And I can even look back on videos where I had this like, you know, whatever, like hustle mindset, grind mindset. And it just feels Mm. so, it just feels so hectic and it feels like I'm trying so hard. And then the times when I'm calm and introspective, I feel like I make the stuff that I'm like, I'm proud that I went through a seat. Even when the season I go through is maybe more of a, not negative, but more of a difficult season. I'm proud that I, I'm proud. I just felt it. And I'm proud that the work reflects that I felt it and thought Mm. about it as opposed to just being this hectic mess. Yeah. Yeah. And that you didn't, you didn't fake it through that, like through the down times. Yeah. You can feel that heaviness. Yeah. um, Which, yeah, is also honorable because it'd be easy to just fake it and do the hustle stuff. Um, Yeah. Wow. That's, that's sick, man. Well, that's the other thing is, historically the creative process isn't it's usually not something that has a recycle time of one week like yeah like think about think about like the fact that i don't know how many albums the beatles came out with but it sure as heck was fewer albums than there are videos on my youtube channel Mm -hmm. for some reason and I don't know, it's it's not for some reason, it's a very obvious reason, but the internet demands so much of you and expects so much that people are able to have this creative output that's 
freakish and superhuman. Yeah. My favorite bands take like six years before coming out with a new album. My favorite directors take 10 years before coming out with another movie. These things yeah. aren't, you're not supposed to be able to just have your best idea every week. And it's a bummer yeah. because I, I, I hear people on the internet just losing their minds. Like what's wrong with me? I'm, mm -hmm. I have my, I can't focus. I procrastinate. I can't come up with any good ideas. It's like, it's because you're being forced into this time frame that yeah, does wow. not, it does not contribute itself to making your best work and never will. <laughs> hmm. Man, people's brains is... really max out. I think anyway. Yeah, totally. That's so true. And I have tried to hit that weekly upload cycle so many times. And one of two things happens. One, I have to massively simplify my video concepts and the video structure, which is fine. In It's fine in the sense that it usually leads to like list videos, you know, lists of things I use or things that are helpful. Um, or or it, it leads to very practical, practical topics. Um, and then the other, the other side of the coin is I try to hit that weekly deadline, but I come up with an idea that I'm really excited about and I just can't do it in a week. It needs more time to do what we were just talking about. It needs more time to breathe and develop. And thankfully when that happens, I have given it the more time to breathe and I don't hit the weekly upload. But then so many milestones happen in that time that evolved the video into something that I'm more proud of yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So, dude, yeah, that is, this, that's a great point. I love that. This goes back to something that I've, I actually remember talking about this with you early when we first met. And it, it, it's my insane frustration with the, done is better than perfect thing. I, I just, I almost nothing makes me more frustrated than the done is better mm. than perfect mentality because it's like, okay, I understand the sentiment, right? It's like, sometimes there comes a point where it's just like, you just need to publish and get rid of it. And it's just like you, if you're gonna, if you're gonna wrap it up, you might as well just wrap it up and publish it. If you just literally cannot move any further on it, I, I understand. And, and also like for your own progress, it's better to upload especially in the, in the world of YouTube, it's better to upload more often l lower quality than less often higher quality, right? Yeah. Okay, that feels like a very isolated use case of the idea of done is better than perfect. Because in my head, it's like, why not perfect? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> done is yeah. the word perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know the dex dictionary <laughs> definition of the word perfect, but it supersedes the word done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give me time. Like I'm asking, I'm asking myself here, be willing Schaefer of the future episode 100. <laughs> Let yourself think about some stuff and don't freak yeah. out about, all these things that are just, they're imaginary. And it's this pressure that's not even real. And I'm, again, I have to say this qualifier every time. It's like, I'm lucky to have the job and the financial situation I'm in right now where I get to do this. But take advantage of the fact that you have time to come up with a good idea. I want to have, I want to have one good idea a year. I don't want to have, yeah. I don't want to have 50 okay ideas a year. But, I, yeah. you know. Do, yeah. I love that perspective and <clears throat> like, I don't know. I, I could now list the, the ways that done is better than perfect is helpful, but that's not, that's not the point of this. Like to anyone listening that done is better than perfect has helped you. Hell yeah. Like good. Let it help you. That helps me so often. Enjoy it's your just, Qdoba. <laughs> it's just it's both both are helpful sure. you know like, yeah, sure. you, you, like you you need both and you need to understand that that saying is nuanced it's not ultimate truth right right it's right. nuanced 
Um, if I am, if I am down to color and mixing on a project and I'm shifting one second B roll clips around and it's driving me nuts and I feel like it's mostly complete done is better than perfect. Just like hit upload, be happy with it. Um, but yeah, on a broader sense, if there's something that you really, really care about and you believe can turn into something beautiful don't be done with it just because it's monday and you upload on mondays if you think there's more to be done and more that can come out of it like give it that time to be closer to perfect yeah i think something you said earlier is also important for me my end goal isn't to be a youtuber this is terrible advice yeah. if you're trying to be a YouTuber. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so your end goal is also important. Like my end goal is to look back on all the things I made when I was in this season of my life and be and not cringe when I watch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least to some extent. And that requires a lot more thought and a lot more work. Um, yeah, yeah. And and that probably is why you hear that advice so much on YouTube, because, yeah, if you're making tutorials or reviewing products or doing reaction videos to TikToks, done is definitely better than perfect yeah and don't and don't let me say that that's not a good thing those aren't good things to do because the overwhelming majority of my day i watch those types of videos yeah yeah totally yeah totally it's it it takes all kinds um and yes it's, it's like the same with the gear doesn't matter thing gear doesn't matter is helpful to say sometimes and sometimes it's absolutely not true and gear definitely matters yeah um and i have made a gear doesn't matter video in the past and i'm actually probably going to make a gear does matter video coming up soon but yeah. i'm not going to call it that because that is if anything just the gear budget in your back pocket makes you better at snowboarding <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> come at me, liberals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hope people yeah. have a sense of humor. <laughs> these, these are jokes. These are jokes. <laughs> um, we did it. Jake and Schaefer solve another creative problem. We did it. Dude, I, I could talk about that that realm of stuff all day i no, love talking real. about that stuff agreed it's because um, it I, I feel like my opinion and my viewpoint on it is constantly changing too <laughs> yeah yeah well i i don't know if i should hmm. well yeah okay this is kind of a just another aside but because the the gear doesn't matter versus gear does matter um dude i've been trying to buy a fuji x100v for like a week straight and i haven't used ebay in a long time but i've been all over ebay trying to find an x100v this is a great conversation because i just ordered a camera on ebay did you really yeah whoa well I'll try to make this concise. The point is I've been trying to order this X100V because I'm looking for a photography camera that reignites my love of photography. And so it's interesting because I'm literally just like gear is all that matters in this case. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. I'm, I'm looking for a piece of gear that's fun to use and inspiring and in this case replicates film photography like that's why i'm trying to hunt this x100v down and and make a make a video about it and to genuinely just find a camera that's fun for me to to return to photography as a hobby um but the the ebay story is that i've been looking for this camera for so long and the retail on this camera is fourteen hundred dollars but the bidding wars have gotten it up to $2,000, $2,200. It's crazy. Like, it's so... And people are buying it. People are buying this point-and-shoot camera for $2,000. Jeez. And I randomly stumbled on one that was listed used for $900. And it wasn't a bid. It was a buy now. So I just, like, swooped in on it, bought it, was so stoked. The guy... 
it, it listed as shipped the same day that I bought it. So I was like, this is amazing. I just got the deal of the century on this thing. Well, now it's been a week later and the tracking info for it still says USPS is still waiting for the item. A tracking number has been created, but we haven't received the package. So I clicked on the eBay user to send him a message and it just says this user no longer exists. No way. <laughs> so this dude just fake shipped his camera and then deleted his entire eBay account. <laughs> no so, way. I, it's so annoying because it's like, what's the point? Obviously, he's not going to get away with it. Like eBay is going to yeah, yeah. not pay him and they're going to refund me. Yeah. But it sucks. So now Man. I'm back to searching for it and trying to find one that's not $2,000. That's for such a I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks so bad. Yeah, it, and probably as this goes on, your desire for an X100V just compounds. <laughs> totally, yeah, totally. I I bid on one because it was at I don't know fifteen hundred dollars, which yeah. even that I was like, okay, cool, fifteen hundred. And then the the bids start going up, and you get that adrenaline when yeah. you're in a bidding war, yeah. you know, as the it's ticking down for the last minute. And I was yeah. like, no, 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 <laughs> I'm about not to, worth it. I'm about to maybe unlock the answers to this problem for you because I went through this when I bought my red camera because I bought my Komodo at the height of Komodo um, hype, oh, and yeah. I was I was even on a wait list on the on the red website for six months just to order it, just to just to place the stupid order, and then that didn't oh, even wow. guarantee that you would get it for another six months, right? So I went through this and the demand was insane and they were same deal It's like people were reselling them for twice what they were worth. Um, yeah. And what I, where I ended up finding it was I just started going to s small camera companies around the country and calling them and saying, oh, do you wow. have this camera in stock? And that's how I got it. I, there was, it was a, it was a tiny camera shop in Texas had one and I called them and they're like, yeah. You, and then I sent them shipping info and everything. And I had it Whoa. within a week. Yep. Man, okay. So I would yeah, try that. I'll try that route. I would yeah. try that because yeah, I mean the obvious thing is the obvious thing is eBay, but that's also where everyone's gonna price gouge. The camera shops aren't yeah. gonna price gouge, and a lot of them ordered a big shipment and they're in some weird rural town, and people don't even know they have them. So yeah, that's oh, my advice. Man. That's a great call. Yeah, hmm, I like it. I even uh, I even sent Fuji a voice memo on instagram <laughs> to try to get a loaner i just wanted a loaner yeah. to like make a youtube video with it yeah but that didn't work either dang um so what camera are you trying to trying to buy or just uh, buy? well actually i think i think i'm not positive but i think the conversation we had about you wanting an x100v got me thinking about photography again and i used to shoot mm. I used to shoot a ton of film photography. Like I would never consider myself a photographer. Whoa, but I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to shoot it all the time. Um, and I, I never I never posted her. I think I probably posted three of the many, many, many film photos I've taken over, over the years. Um, they were just for keeps and fun, you know? Like a lot of times mm -hmm. it would be either disposables or like I have this, I have this Agfa camera from the 80s that's just like fully automatic or whatever. Um, and... I also got two film cameras from my late grandfather when he passed away. There, I I got the camera, and he had oh, a he had a roll of, he had a roll of film on that camera, where I was saving every last photo for something really important that happened in my life. So when I graduated college, I took a photo with that camera, because um, I think oh, there's like sixteen cool. there's like sixteen photos left on the roll, and they all got stolen. Every single one of them no. got stolen. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. God. Um, so I haven't had a film camera since because I was just like, well, I'm And done. it had all that roll of film yep. was in it when it got stolen. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I, yeah. That's tragic. I know. Jeez. It's such a bummer. Um, and so I've had a bad taste in my mouth for, for film photography. But then the other day when we were talking about it, I was like, man, I loved doing that. I loved because the cameras are so cool like the amount of history yeah. packed into these things and uh i've always 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 wanted a nikon f3 um because i don't know if you know you know how a lot of nikon cameras have the little red stripe on them usually it's by the shutter button there's like a, a little red um i think i don't I'm, think i've ever seen one in person oh like a night any nikon camera any nikon oh interesting ever. interesting <laughs> yeah well it's funny because you know in video world we're always like you know no, you know no one likes nikon 
Um, but in photo world, they make great, great, great cameras and they have an incredible history. Um, I mean, they're like one of the OGs, but they, mm. they, I think it was either the F1 or the F3 was the first time they put that red stripe on the body. Um, and the designer that designed the frame of the camera was the same guy that designed the, I think he was the same guy that designed all the Ferraris. So uh, or it, it was like some designer from Ferrari was contracted out to design it. So anyway, they're like really legendary and they're really cool. And the thing that's really cool about them is they don't have the, they're the Leica M6 is the one that's like really expensive that everyone wants. That's just mm -hmm. a rangefinder film. Anyway, I think they have an equal amount of history that for some reason people don't care about nearly as much as the M6. Hmm. Um, yeah. And I've always wanted one. I've always wanted an M3. Um, and I didn't find an M3, but I found an M2 for like a crazy deal. Uh, and I was just like, you know what? I'm going to get back into this. So I ordered a Nikon F2. It's in like mint condition. Um, wow. And I did check the seller. And he had like 15,000 positive <laughs> reviews. So, <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Damn. So I'm, I'm really excited. I also have, um, I also, so when I did get that camera for my grandpa, I also got just a bunch of roll, no photos on them, but a bunch of rolls of like Velvia and Ektachrome. So in my refrigerator, I have a bunch of rolls of film I'm looking forward to showing. Oh, so. that's awesome. Yeah. Dude, that's sick. Wow. That's really exciting. It's just, yeah, it's so important, I think, to always have creative hobbies yeah like just things that are hobbies and well that's what i was fun. thinking so, i was like i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna do this again because i like i liked doing it just for me i wasn't trying to be a mm -hmm. whatever um, i also think in the future it'd be cool if i have enough and enough that i really like to do like a, a book that yeah. also has writing in it that has oh, words yeah. in it because yeah. if you think about it a picture is worth a thousand words and if i add words to that It'll be a, like if I have twenty four pictures, it'll, it'll be, be like, like over a million dollar book. It'll be like over twenty four thousand words worth of info <laughs> in that one book. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah, you could call your book twenty four thousand words. Wow, and there's twenty four photos. It would be longer than that, but anyway, <laughs> I'm stoked. I can't wait to get it. Yeah, because it's been a long time. I, my my favorite thing ever was to shoot Triax four hundred, which is black and white film. Um, and 400 is like basically the ISO or the ASA, but I would shoot it at 1600. So it adds a crazy amount of film grain. And then I would put nice. a red filter on, on the front and that adds even more film grain. And then I would shoot <laughs> at long shutters. So all my photos would just be blurry, grainy messes. And I <laughs> love it. You would. That's awesome, dude. That's a, Yeah. That's amazing. I literally just started following a photographer on instagram for that exact look that you just described that's sick is that <laughs> awesome. is that what your profile photo is no us? no that 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 was actually taken with my iphone um that oh wow okay I, that story is kind of funny let's hear it i've been talking so much <laughs> <laughs> that's okay we're in the we're in the deep end now we're at the deep end of the pool yeah um so you either well we were gonna do Q and A for the hundredth episode. Oh, true. So, you but decide. I say we, I, I can say do it we quick. I save can do it. that. Oh, save. Okay, yeah, cool, we, cool, cool. Yeah. we save the we save the Q and A for the hundredth oh, episode. Okay. Because I think it'd be fun to. I didn't put a lot of thought. I didn't for either. It, yeah. But it'd be fun to ask each other questions, just for the podcast, and then also use that use those questions on the hundredth episode. Yeah, it would also be fun to think but, it out a little bit more than I have. Yeah. And so also, if anyone's out there at this point of the <laughs> podcast and you're listening and you got a question for this next episode and the 100th episode, leave them in the comments of YouTube or on Spotify. I found out you can leave comments on oh, Spotify now. Cool. Um, so, yeah. Now that we got that out there, let's hear the story of your profile photo. Well, I'll make it quick, but... And I think I'm changing it. I think I came up with my next profile photo. I'm, I think I'm going to try and shoot it tonight. Actually, this is funny timing because Whoa. I'm rebranding today or at least I'm, wow. I'm shooting the rebrand today. Nice. But so it was when I was living in Boulder, I lived in Boulder for like three months and then found out Boulder is a cesspool <laughs> <laughs> of Arcteryx. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, but I was living, it was like a, it was winter and it was like one of the snowiest winters they've had in Boulder in like years and years. 
and all the all the problems in my life stem from my stupid cars and my car i didn't have snow tires but i really needed to get to i don't even remember where i had to go but i really needed to get there and i could not get my car out of a flat parking spot with barely any snow on it it was just too icy oh and i was like i i put my car in neutral and i was trying to like push it or whatever and i was getting so mad dude i was like i was like whipping my head all over the place and just like about to explode and oh. i stopped and i paused and i was like i want to remember how i feel right now <laughs> and so i took wow. i took a selfie of me just going like <laughs> <laughs> just shaking your head in it anger. was also like 5 30 in the morning um so the sun was like just Whoa. coming up or something like that and um, yeah. yeah, so it's this like motion blur photo of my head going, and then the red in the image is from the, the, my tail lights. Yeah, I gotta pull it up while you're talking. Yeah, the red the red in the image is from my tail lights because I was behind the car trying to push it out of this out of this parking spot. Dang! Now that I'm telling the story, I'm like maybe I shouldn't change it. Um, that, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's wow. That's really cool. And man, what an what an what a treat of a story because you would just have no idea yeah looking at it yeah i mean it's still sick to look at but knowing the story behind it is so cool yeah i was really stoked on it maybe i won't just like it. it is pretty a peak a... low moment yeah it was it really <laughs> well, was what what are you thinking for the rebrand what are you thinking of shooting for the next one well if i do it i mean it's not like anyone cares but <laughs> <laughs> if i do it it has something it's a it's it has something to do with my short film idea so it's a Ooh, it's a foreshadow okay. to my short film idea. Oh, sick! Oh, dude, then you got it. Yeah, so you got it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I got to hold off though. This this one will always be in the archives. Yeah, but... and it's similar to it's similar to that one. And I don't even oh, know if cool. the short film idea is what's really going to happen, but I'm stoked on the idea. And I told it to my little sister yesterday, and she seemed to like it. So sick. That's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. If Bailey likes it, then it's a good idea. She also might have just been being nice, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> awesome um sick well then yeah let's let's do uh next week we're gonna do our 100th episode q a this time we're really gonna do it we're really gonna do it so let us know if you got any questions and thanks a ton for being here we appreciate you yeah no kidding unless you eat at qdoba then yeah Get the fuck out of our podcast. You're a poor loser that thinks done is better than perfect. <laughs> That's what we established. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we love you all. Those are all jokes. And amen. Amen. Thank you.